Elephants are big. Mice are little. Trucks are big. Trakes are little. Trees are big. Dandelions are little. Bass drums are big. Whistles are little. Hey guys, welcome back to Fun Fast Facts Friday. Today I want to talk about hyaluronic acid and does size matter? Before we jump into that, I just want to say I'm filming in my bedroom today because it's so darn humid outside that, um, yeah, I want to be in the air conditioning. So sorry if this whole side of my face is in shadow. I just don't want to do anything about it right now because I'm too lazy. The other thing I want to say is I did open up subscriptions for Face Mask Alchemy. I am only making so many, so if you do want to sign up, go ahead and sign up. This mask is going to be really good. I've been tweaking it for a while, and so um, don't wait for the reveal video. Because uh, chances are it might have sold out before I release the reveal video, which will be on July 25th. I will send out the boxes on July 28th. All right, now let's jump into hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is a major of the extracellular matrix. It exists in our body in many places in many sizes. It does many things. You could say it wears many hats. It is naturally occurring in the skin. So when I say it exists in the extracellular matrix, what I mean is that we have the cells that make up the body and then there's the stuff outside. Think of a college party when you're like, that loner is out on the balcony alone in the extracellular matrix. Uh, except they're not alone and yeah, that was a bad analogy. Anyway, <laughs> it exists outside the cell. Now, what we know about hyaluronic acid is that it is a potent humectant. We're not going to go into humectants today because I already did a video about that. I'll link it below. But what we can say and what we do know is that hyaluronic acid loves water. Get ready for the most quoted fact about hyaluronic acid is that it can hold on to a thousand times its weight in water. It's very strong, it's very aqua-loving, aquaphilic. That means that it plays a crucial role in skin hydration and also skin volume. It also contributes to collagen and elastin. Now, what did we mean when we say that size matters? Let's go back to skin penetration and remember that our skin does not really like to let stuff in. It's like a bouncer at the club. It's like, it's selective. One thing that we do know is that things of a certain molecular size are able to penetrate the skin. They oftentimes use or refer to something called the Dalton rule or the Dalton scale. We know that things that are below 500 Dalton are able to penetrate the skin. In fact, this is an interesting side note, but many skin irritants are under 500 Dalton or things that are able to penetrate the skin and be absorbed into the body parabens, vitamin C, just to name a few. Now hyaluronic acid ranges from 20 Dalton to 2000, and it also exists in our body in many different sizes. When I was researching humectants, I came across this article. And it kind of stuck with me and there were things that kind of bugged me about it uh, in the way that kind of bug you and you're like, hmm, that might be true. There was just some things that I've been reading and it was just kind of all adding up that I was like, hmm, I'm going to research that. And also I kept seeing um, that these products that are being marketed with low molecular weight hyaluronic acid. So it was just kind of like all coming together is that I had read this, it had stuck with me, and then also I keep seeing these products coming up marketed as low molecular weight hyaluronic acid. So let's kind of jump in and go back to the beginning a little bit. The intro of the article talks about how the beauty industry is all of a sudden ramping up this idea of low molecular weight hyaluronic acid but they're doing the wrong studies and they're ignoring the actual science behind whether or not that's good for the skin. Now see, a lot of times in the 
cosmetic or beauty industry, they're using hyaluronic acid. Um, the common, one article said the common size was 800. So we know that's probably not going to penetrate the skin very well. It's going to sit on top of the skin and hold moisture there. Now, enter this idea of low molecular weight hyaluronic acid, and this guy is saying they're not doing the right tests, and they're using this, and it's actually not good for the skin. So what he talked about, and I'm going to paraphrase him a little bit here and kind of cut out some of the more molecular biology words. So basically what happens um, in the skin is that when the skin is injured, it breaks down hyaluronic acid, and the large hyaluronic acid go to promoting skin regeneration. But these small little fragments go towards triggering the inflammation pathways. Now, I can't really get into, I know somewhat about a lot of these terms they're talking about, but to sit here and explain it, that's just going a little bit deeper than I think that we want to talk about. But basically, there's all these players in the skin, in the body, when the tissue is injured in this inflammation pathway. Um, I know a little bit about it, like I said, because I've studied the skin for nursing. I really wanted to go into wound care when I worked at the hospital. And um, also, I've studied medications and how they affect the skin um, or tissue regeneration of the body. I'm, I'm very intrigued by what he's saying. And he has quite a few references to back up this idea. So then I stumbled upon this study where they were basically trying to find the exact size where low molecular weight hyaluronic acid penetrated the skin was able to cause positive changes without triggering the inflammation pathway. So they came upon the size of 50. 50 Dalton is basically the size. Anything smaller than that basically triggers the inflammation pathway. So they tested sizes between 50 and 1500. And what's interesting is that this 50 size, um, it was able to penetrate the skin and cause different changes in the genes or skin in about 120 different variations. Now, to put that kind of in perspective, they also cited that a 0.5% retinol is able to change or cause expression in 160. So what does that really mean? Uh, it's doing good things. Um, it's positively impacting the skin. Uh, so what's the takeaway of this video? Why am I even talking about this? Personally, I wouldn't be going and throwing down hundreds of dollars to purchase products with low molecular weight hyaluronic acid. Uh, I'm really interested more myself in consuming things that I know hydrate my skin and support me internally and using topical humectants. If you saw a product you were really interested, one thing I would do personally is email the company and ask if they can release the size to you or at least con confirm that it's 50 or above. Uh, that way you know you're not getting into the dangerous ground. Uh, if they won't release it to you, then I definitely wouldn't probably purchase that product. Was this in video that informative? Um, I don't know. <laughs> it, I guess I just find it interesting, and I think some of you out there are really smart too, so maybe you might have more that you could add to the discussion. So kind of just investigating the hype of beauty products. If you're interested, check out the articles. I'll link them below and I will see you next time. Bye. Today, I want to talk about hyaluronic. So when I say it exists in the LR, I would be a little bit suspect.